So hello, today I'm here with our project manager Andre. Hello. And we'll show you our built mobilized truck, a mobile labor laboratory, PSL3 standard. And this time a video will be a little bit different. We'll show you the and talk about the different features what uh, this truck has. And uh, Andre will be the main guy talking today as he has basically built it and knows the details of this truck very much. Maybe to start out with uh, generally, you see all those logos here. So it's a joint venture in the European Horizon project with different companies and not the company's research facilities. We have the Benan Nocht Institute for Tropen Medicine in Germany, Hamburg, the Austrian Institute of Technology, Exus, Arges, Theia, Red Cross uh, in Romania is the partner, Friedrich Reufler in Institute is a partner, so and a Greek company. Andre will, will later blend in because I'm scared that I will pronounce something wrong. So these are all the participants in this project and it's a research project. But uh, maybe let's now go to the technicals. But first struck uh, here in this truck is probably the solar panels on the sides. And uh, maybe Andre, you can talk a little bit about the power supply system of this truck and why it has solar panels on the sides. Yes, as you can see, there are solar panels on the sides. On the sides, we have used uh, these flexible uh, panels made out of plastic. Uh, on the middle roof, we have uh, more conventional ones, uh, uh, solid panels, which, uh, which yield uh, better uh, power supply. But since, uh, since these uh, side ones need to be more rigi rigid and, uh, and, and robust uh, than we are using these plastic type, of, type ones. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they are also lighter, I think. Exactly, these are lighter, but these doesn't yield that much uh, power that, uh, that the conventional ones. Mm -hmm. All the, all the power is fed into, uh, into the batteries on board. We have two times 200 amp hours uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, all the energy is fed into the batteries via inverter and taken from the batteries uh, when needed. For uh, <coughs> for conditions like today, when we don't have any sunlight, we have an uh, 8 kilowatt uh, capable uh, diesel generator that will kick in automatically once uh, once the battery level drops under 30 percent. Uh, quite neat uh, setup. Uh, that gives us uh, 100 percent. Uh, autonomity uh, and also we have in the back uh, power supply uh, connections for uh, grid uh, support so so that's that's mainly mainly about the electrical supply side of things okay the next question uh, normally when people look at our products uh, they are used to the Iveco daily chassis so Andre can we talk a little bit why we on this project had to go to the full-size truck? The main reason is the weight, uh, the other is, uh, is the size of the, of the container itself. Um, usually on the base models that are built on uh, Iveco dailies have uh, something like uh, one ton uh, uh, payload capacity. It's a bit since, small, it's two tons, if, if it's empty. Yeah, mm -hmm. it depends on the equipment, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, since we have here generators, batteries, inverters, we have full-size laboratory inside with all the equipment, uh, then we needed to have something bigger. So we chose uh, uh, Mercedes Atego, uh, which is uh, 50, 15 uh, tons uh, gross weight, and we have payload capacity around uh, similar like we have Ivecos, but, uh, but since we have much more equipment here the, and less space inside, then, then this is more than enough. Mm. And uh, just uh, who doesn't know, the rolling unit shelter is built as a container, like Andre told, so you actually can also use various types of uh, 
base vehicles like this uh, Mercedes or MIN or Scania or whatever is your preferred choice if you want to have some specific requests. But uh, we have some more interesting stuff here. Can you tell us a bit uh, uh, what are those or what, what for are those tanks here below? Uh, so one of the requirements uh, for this type of laboratory is to have a water supply system uh, and water treatment system for uh, uh, for decontamination purposes. Uh, so the laboratory has uh, three uh, separate water tanks. Uh, one on the other side is fresh water supply. The one you see here is the wastewater. Uh, and on the other side, we have as well a uh, bio waste tank where we are going to uh, accumulate all the wastewater coming from potentially hazardous uh, environments. So this will be chemically treated and uh, uh, discarded. From here, where you can see the freshwater tank, we can uh, hook up uh, here uh, water supply from uh, from 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 the grid. Uh, also, we can uh, hold here 180 liters uh, fresh water, so that will give us uh, some autonomity. But uh, but it's uh, mainly mainly the setup will will be hooked up uh, to uh, to some hose that uh, that will provide us uh, water supply. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, let's talk a bit about uh, interior. We will uh, later in the video blend down in the interior. So regarding rooms, I think the main feature is that we have an enclosed the uh, airtight BSL free room with airlocks. Can you talk about uh, how it was built and how we made it that it fits to the standard? Uh, in terms of uh, the laboratory, uh, the the shelter contains of three parts. We have two fold-out parts and we have middle part. In the middle part, we have located uh, uh, a contained room for a laboratory purpose, uh, which also has airlock and, uh, and uh, ventilation cascade. Uh, regarding the ventilation system, uh, we have contained room, uh, so it's 100% uh, uh, airtight. So only way to suck air inside of the room is through uh, through the doors, and everything is that is exhausted goes uh, through double HEPA fil filtrations. Uh, we are able to create uh, over hundred pascals of pressure difference inside of the laboratory, but uh, ma mainly uh, mm, the regular value would be somewhere thirty to forty pascals only. Um, yeah, and uh, I think the room inside is also cladded with stainless steel. What, what, what is that for? Yeah, the room is uh, is covered with stainless steel sheeting uh, for easier uh, cleaning, uh, decontamination, and also to provide uh, a better sealing for the room itself. So it would be, so it would we we can be sure that it's airtight. Mm. And the stainless steel is already integrated into the sandwich panel, is that so? Yeah, the sandwich panels are the same as you can see outside, but inside these are laminated, uh, not with plastic, but uh, stainless uh, steel sheeting. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the different equipment that we see in the inside? What kind of equipment uh, uh, has been integrated to the truck? Yeah, since, uh, since this laboratory concept is about uh, one health concept, meaning that, uh, uh, that the processes that are going to be run here inside uh, 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 are dealing with uh, samples from the environment, from animals and from humans, which is, uh, which is also quite unique. Uh, for that purpose, uh, in the laboratory room, we have a biosafety cabinet, we have a, a, bio, a BSL-4 uh, level uh, glove box, we have uh, three incubators, uh, fridges, uh, and all the ventilation equipment. Also, uh, inside we have two autoclaves, uh, one is in the laboratory room and the other is in airlock. Uh, the airlock autoclave uh, t 
takes directly uh, water, wastewater from the sink, uh, treats it and uh, discards it to the regular wastewater. So basically, uh, the potentially uh, hazardous uh, wastewater is treated on board uh, and decontaminated. Uh, with all the other equipment, uh, we have also an, an emergency shower uh, inside of the airlock. Uh, and uh, this drain will go directly to the bio waste tank. On this project, what would you say was the most uh, challenging part? The most challenging part is to put together all these uh, subsystems, uh, water, uh, power systems, uh, ventilation systems in such a small, uh, small unit. Uh, at first, uh, it seemed uh, impossible to have something like it. But we have managed to figure out uh, the solutions, how we can, uh, how we can uh, support all the actions that are going to be carried out in this laboratory. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Is there anything else that you would like to point out? What's uh, uh, some interesting facts about? Uh, it has been a really interesting project in terms of the developments uh, in, our, uh, in our own product lineup. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, implemented here uh, the uh, not a hydraulic but electrical uh, actuation system. That's, that was new uh, development for us. Uh, and all the knowledge that we have gained from this project, we can utilize uh, to all kinds of different laboratory projects in the future. So, so, uh, so, so we are we are anxious about uh, about the future and about the mobile laboratories, which is uh, I can I can tell uh, one of, one of the items in our lineup now. Andre, can you also tell us uh, what kind of air conditioner or climate control uh, is uh, built in here? Uh, since this uh, truck will be operating mostly in a warmer climate uh, environments, uh, then we have uh, thought about this uh, quite thoroughly and we have installed here a 7 kilowatt uh, uh, capable of cooling uh, split unit with, uh, with a roof unit that blows air uh, inside of the laboratory room and also uh, on the sides uh, when the when the container is open. Uh, in terms of heating, uh, how is this sold? In terms of heating, we have uh, floor heating inside of the laboratory, and uh, this uh, uh, split unit can also uh, create uh, heat heat mm -hmm. uh, since it works uh, also as a heat pump. Mm -hmm. And I think the floor heating was important because it doesn't uh, uh, turn the air around or doesn't spread uh, any potential yeah, disease. The, we have also thought about the uh, colder climate operations. That's why we have uh, the heating underneath the floor. We have uh, heating for the water supply pipes and we have uh, heating for all the compartments and places that, that could, could froze. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so yeah, in terms of uh, cooling and heating, we have uh, uh, we have thought about uh, the colder climate environments and colder climate environments. Mm -hmm. uh, one more question. We showed before the solar panels, but I think we didn't mention how much uh, power can they generate? Well, it's nominally uh, four and a half uh, kilowatts. Uh, realistically, we have seen numbers bit above four, mm. so so it's uh, the ballpark is is something like that, yeah. And this is when we use the uh, solar panels on the sides and on the roof. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but the uh, question: the solar panels when the when it's not expanded, it's still they work to still generate an electricity even in this compact uh, transport mode. Yes, this is correct. Uh, actually. Uh, these will generate uh, electricity even while driving. Ah, okay, that's good. And I think we forgot to mention that, uh, as all the other trucks, this is also the automatic uh, leveling system. 
Yeah, this comes uh, more or less as a standard for these type of trucks uh, in order to have a safe and uh, comfortable environment inside of the container. The truck needs to be leveled out first. Mm -hmm. uh, for this, we also use the HPC um, products, uh, the cylinders, uh, the station, and all the controls logic is uh, is is universal for all mm. all our products from trailers to the truck to mm. trucks. And this has still the same Bluetooth connectivity, so you can control it via yes, smartphone. Yes, you can you can control it uh, via smartphone uh, inside from the panel, uh, and and also uh, it includes the the automatic uh, leveling uh, feature. Okay. I think we did a very good overview and hope people like it and we can do later more such laboratories. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.